Uh, one of the new books you have is The Toxic Tooth. Start, I guess, with the scenarios as to why people are told they need a root canal. What has happened with the tooth to be told that they need that procedure? For the most part, although I'm not a dentist, I'm a cardiologist, my co-author mm -hmm. is a dentist, for the most part, root canals are done and recommended by the dentist when you come in with severe tooth pain. So it's usually a pain relief scenario. And that pain is due to the fact that the tooth has gotten infected. The inside pulp has got pathogens, maybe a little abscessing has taken place around the tip of the tooth, and their approach then is to relieve your pain. And in the course of doing that, they literally take off the top of the tooth, route out the nerve and the blood supply, basically they take the life force out of the tooth. I mean, there's still live tooth at the tip of it where it goes into the bone, but the upper part of the tooth has essentially, and this is not meant to be overly dramatic, has essentially been embalmed. Okay, you, you take out the nerve and the blood supply, and when you do that, most of the time, you also take out the nerves that are causing the pain. So the patient gets pain relief, they're happy, but they now have inside their jawbone a chronically infected tooth with anaerobic pathogens making a large amount of toxins and chewing on it so that these things get effectively delivered throughout the body through the lymphatic supply and the venous blood supply. So from the symptomatic point of view it's an effective procedure. It relieves pain but from a physiological point of view there can be few things more catastrophic than a root canal because of the pathogens and toxins that are allowed to proliferate in, inside them. And when this work was initially done, Dr. Huggins was working in conjunction with Dr. Boyd Haley out of the University of Kentucky. Uh, Dr. Haley put the foreword on our book. Dr. Huggins coordinated with a number of other dentists around the country to send all their extracted root canal treated teeth to Dr. Haley. And Dr. Haley devised a test that assayed five different important human enzymes that are used in the production of energy. And he was able to take these root canal, root canal extractions and put them in progressive water soaks and then assay that water, 100% of those specimens had enormous amounts of highly potent toxins, many of them on the order of a thousand-fold times more toxic than botulism when assayed against these enzymes. And lest anyone think, well, maybe that was just pathogens in the mouth and it got contaminated when you pulled it out, well, they also looked at teeth that had been extracted for orthodontic reasons. In other words, just make more room for your teeth to grow out and so you basically take out a normal tooth, no evidence of infection. Well, all of those teeth were completely negative. So they had that control and then to make it even more compelling, Dr. Haley assayed in this fashion from around the country more than 5,000 extracted root canal teeth and 100% of them had these toxins. So this is why Dr. Kulatz and I call the root canal procedure a fatally flawed procedure. It's not flawed in the sense that it won't relieve pain. As I said, you take out the nerve and blood supply, you'll often eliminate the pain. But you absolutely assure, even if it wasn't present before, that you'll always end up with a chronic infected tooth and when it's in the molar area and you chew on it with the enormous pressures that the jawbone can, can generate, you push those pathogens and toxins into the bloodstream. <clears throat> a lot of us, including Dr. Huggins, knew this for a long time, but what makes this book compelling is in the last couple of years, there have been some incredible studies done in the literature. This one group in Finland actually studied patients that had heart attacks and that at angiography they got the blood clot causing the heart attack suctioned out. So they aspirated these blood clots that caused the heart attack and they analyzed these blood clots 
for the typical DNA that's associated with pathogens in root canals and gum disease. These clots had a huge concentration of these oral pathogens inside the clot, 16-fold more concentrated than, than in the blood that they came from. Now, you see in the literature, lots of people like to say, oh, well, this, this is a correlation, this is uh, an association. I think anybody that can look at this evidence and say that this huge concentration of pathogens and toxins inside the blood clot that forms to cause a heart attack is a correlation no more and not a cause and effect is just being irrational. I mean, you don't, you don't form a blood clot and then magically after the fact, pathogens or toxins from somewhere suddenly accumulate in the blood clot. They accumulate, it causes the clot to form, and it's some of the most smoking gun evidence that we've ever seen that shows that these pathogens and toxins in the root canal teeth and the gums, when you chew down, they glow into the bloodstream, they pass through the venous system and the pulmonary arteries, but the reason why they get in the coronary arteries is because the coronary artery is the first high pressure part of the vascular system that these pathogens and toxins reach. Everywhere else it's low pressure. As Soon as they hit the left ventricle, come out high pressure and you get a mechanical effect in, in addition to a, a continuous exposure and these pathogens take hold. And in fact, modern cardiology, my fellow cardiologists, internists, family practice doctors, they now do accept that all coronary heart disease is due to inflammation of the coronary artery. But amazingly enough, they stop asking questions there like, well, why does this inflammation develop? And this inflammation develops almost 100% from pathogens. And 90 to 95% of the time, those pathogens come from root canals and infected gums. So the bottom line being, I can tell you, most of my colleagues, they check the cholesterol, they lower that, they treat the blood pressure, they manage all the quote unquote risk factors of coronary heart disease. And this will lessen your likelihood of having a heart attack the more you manage that. But they almost always think then that when you manage all of those risk factors as effectively as they can be managed, and the patient still goes ahead and has a heart attack, truth be known, what they think is that's just an unlucky patient. And I'm telling you, luck has nothing to do with it. Until cardiologists, internal medicine doctors, and family practice doctors realize that the most common cause of death, heart attack and heart disease, in the world is caused, caused, greater than 90% of the time by dental infections, most of the time in a root canal treated tooth. Hopefully the doctors will realize this and want to protect their patients a little bit better and then they can be the force, hopefully down the road, that puts the pressure on the dentists to basically eliminate this procedure. At the very least, and we talk about this in the book, this needs to be a fully informed consent before somebody has this. I mean, when you go get a surgery, you're told, well, I could have a heart attack, I could get an infection, I could lose a limb, this, that, or the other, but that's okay, I want the surgery, I'm gonna take my shot. Well, they now have in the dental literature, believe it or not, in the dental literature, a survey that shows patients that have one or more root canals in their mouth not failed root canals, not poorly done procedures, they just have a root canal in their mouth, they have a greater chance of heart disease and heart attack. People need to be told this before they get the procedure. I'm not gonna say, and I wouldn't begin to say, that there aren't a lot of people out there with root canals that are doing fine, but I can tell you, flip it around, almost all of the ones that aren't doing well have the root canals too. So. 
Are you going to be the one that somehow tolerates the root canal well, or are you going to be the one where the root canal causes a heart attack? I think people should know that. Mm -hmm. And dentists should know that and appreciate that so that they can fully inform their patients. And much of the time, if you have an infected tooth, you should go straight to extraction because you're just increasing the risk enormously for that person's long-term health. Mm -hmm.